everybody. Welcome to another episode of the Successful Women's TV Show. My name is Galit Ventura Rosen. I am a commercial real estate broker and co-founder of Everyday Woman TV. What I love doing every week is bringing to you women from all over the world that are doing what they love so they can share with you tips of success. Today, I am excited to have all the way from Wisconsin, Sahara. Welcome. Thanks, Kelly. Thank you so much for having me. It's so much fun for me because the online world has given me an opportunity to really interview people from almost every state. I don't think I've interviewed anybody from Wisconsin. If I have, <laughs> ladies, remind me. But really to share your story a little bit about your industry and some tips that they can kind of take away. So I'm really excited to share a little bit about you. And we're going to be talking today from idea to industry leader, which we could all use. So let's go ahead and jump in just a little bit about Sahara. Sahara Rose DeVore is the founder and CEO of the Travel Coach Network, a global community of travel coaches. Sahara went from broke college student to traveling to 84 countries solo. That is so cool. You'll have to sprinkle some of those stories in for us to trailblazing a new path in the travel industry. She believes that there is more to a travel career than just blogging and booking trips and that the travel planning process is more than just a transaction. This led her to creating the world's first and only ICF accredited certification program for travel coaches. Ooh, I love that. You're going to have to tell us a little bit about the certification and all of those things as well. So please, Go ahead and get us started. I think this idea of industry leader, right? Turning us into an industry leader in our field is so important because at the end of the day, that's what people want to see and know about you before they start working with you. Yeah. Yeah. I'll share a little bit more of how I even got started in the travel industry. Um, I was never someone who thought that travel was going to be my career path. I was actually someone who never knew what my career path was going to be. You know, when I graduated from high school and then going into college, all my friends knew what major they wanted to focus in and what career path they wanted. I was just always kind of figuring that out. I had a lot of different interests, uh, but nothing really spoke to you. This is something I want to do for the rest of my life or a career. And so I, it was into my third year university. I was changing um, schools, going across country. I used to live in Arizona and I was moving back to the Midwest and I applied for um, just doing some Google research. I came across a hospitality and tourism management program in Chicago and I was like, travel, who doesn't want to travel, right? That sounds cool. Uh, so I got into it and that's when I really started learning more about how big this world is and what's all out there. And that really came to my advantage when I graduated two years later from university, because at 22 years old, who, how, who are we, you know, what, what do we want out of life? We've been in, you know, university or schools for so long and, you know, people telling us what we should and shouldn't do, what we can and can't do. And now we have the sense of freedom. And so when I graduated in 2010, I was like, what do I want out of life? Who do I want to be? I was also struggling with, um, you know, bouts of anxiety. Um, and I felt overwhelmed, but I knew that sitting getting a corporate job, which I could have easily done in the big city of Chicago was not going to be for me. I knew that was going to contribute to my unhappiness that I had. So I decided to book a one-way ticket to Ireland, packed a backpack. And I said, I'm going to go travel Western Europe. I've heard of this thing called backpacking Europe. I'm going to give it a shot on my own. Mm -hmm. um, so I am an only child. So I never felt like I had to have someone come with me. And I got bit by the travel bug and fell in love with what it was doing for me. And that's when I spent the that month and a half I was going to go for turned out to be 10 years of travel. Wow, no way. Before. That yeah. is amazing. Oh, wow. And is that the time that you did those 84 countries? Yep. Within that decade, I traveled to 84 countries. I didn't think I was ever going to travel to 84 countries. I didn't keep tally until one day someone asked. And then I went back and, and kind of marked them all down. Um, and then it became a part of just uh, my entire journey as a whole. Well, truly a passion. To, yeah, absolutely. Um, I was learning so much while I was traveling of um, why people were, why others were traveling, what travel meant to them on a deeper, more personal level outside of just taking a vacation. And what I came to realize is that travel, we all travel for different reasons. We're a different person every time That's we travel. Fair. 
And that travel is very beneficial to us in so many different ways. Agreed. Um, and And that's what that understanding sparked, you know, what I do in my business now. Oh, I love it. So I love traveling. I have not traveled to even close to 84 countries. Okay. Most people I'm not. so excited. So that's next. I've been, but I did a really fun trip, which was a really big deal for me to like, not last summer, the summer before, we'll say two summers ago. It was a special trip. Here you go. Why do you take a trip? I was turning 50 about a month after we got back and we did 16 nights. It was the first time I had ever traveled that long without my kids, even though my kids are adults now. And I went London, Ireland, Scotland, and it was so much fun, Sahara, because we rented a car and we just saw it the way you needed to see it. Mm -hmm. So I'm so excited to hear a little bit more about how all of this led to starting your own company and really these things that we can have everybody walk away with about becoming an industry leader. I mean, obviously, seeing 84 countries set you up for success in that area. Um, yes and no. I mean, there's a lot of people who travel to more countries than I have, um, but it all depends on what you do with what you are learning along okay. the way. And as we know, travel can teach us a lot, not only about ourselves, but about the world around us, about humanity, um, but also about the travel industry. So during that time I traveled, I say I traveled during a really prime time in the tourism industry. There was a rise of, you know, technology and all the apps and software and uh, websites that we have today to make it easy to travel. Um, And then there was the rise of the impact that social media had on the tourism industry with uh, Instagram and travel influencers. And I still struggled for a long time to figure out what do I, I have all this knowledge and love of travel. What can I do? And but I gave myself grace. So I said, I am just going to enjoy my travels until I'm 30 years old. I'll work all these other jobs. I'll do all these other things to, for, um, to fund my travels, but I'm not going to figure out what I need to do and put that pressure on myself until I'm 30. 30 came about and <laughs> it was the very first time that I bought a laptop and started traveling with it. And I remember sitting in the north of Spain in a city called Bilbao and opened up my laptop in the common rooms of my hostel and started Googling how to start an online business. Like, how do people make money online? What travel jobs are there that people start businesses in? Because I felt like I had learned of all these different career options, job options, not only in the tourism program that I was in, but just traveling. None of it aligned with what I wanted to do and how I wanted to use my knowledge of travel to make a better and bigger impact on the lives of others. Okay. That's when I came across the coaching industry, the coaching world and saw how much it was, you know, it was soaring and something clicked. And I said, I want to be a travel coach. I didn't see it. So that really would be the start of the idea. Yep. That was like, it was something again in my, my gut. I saw this coaching world. It was the first time I was ever exposed to it. I've never looked up life coaches, never had a business coach before that. And something clicked. And I said, I want to be a travel coach. And as I was figuring out what that looked like, who I wanted to serve and where I wanted to focus in, which happened to be wellness travel coaching for the corporate world. Okay. Um, about a little less than a year later, Uh, That's when I founded the Travel Coach Network by the rise of interest of others online asking about travel coaching. Uh, So that was the catalyst to starting the Travel Coach Network, our global. So tell me for a minute, because I myself would like to understand Mm -hmm. further, what is a travel coach? Yeah, Yeah, that's obviously a very popular question. A travel (laughs) coach, unlike a travel agent, doesn't focus on the booking phase of a trip. Instead, they help people set intentions for their trip and better understand why their clients or customers want to travel so that they can help them use travel as a tool for things like transformation, self-discovery, finding clarity, finding purpose, healing, all of these really personal underlying reasons why we choose to go on a trip. So it's like using travel as that vessel, that tool to reach those goals that you have. Okay. Wow. That is amazing. Okay. So I'd love to hear a little bit more about, so now we've got our idea. And you started your own company. How many years was this ago? Yeah, that was in early 2019 that I founded the Travel Coach Network. Amazing. Amazing. All right. Well, I have to ask, don't get mad at me. Okay. Sahara, you started your company maybe a year or less before COVID. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So talk to me how I've got to ask how you went, you were a travel coach and now travel is restricted. 
Yeah, actually it's, it's quite common. People ask that all the time. In fact, the 2020, 20, the pandemic, it catapulted our business. I love so hearing so many that. different ways. Um, for two twofold. One, what my wellness travel coaching business did wonders because it pushed wellness self-care to the forefront, especially in the corporate space. People left their jobs and was like, I don't want to go back to my company that doesn't value me. So it really and business travel uh was my big focus. Um but for the travel coach network, there was all these travel experts, travelers who now couldn't do anything in their in their business and said, what I, I love what I'm doing in travel, but I want to add more meaning and purpose to what I'm doing and how I help people. What is there? And they came across travel coaching. So it adds that more authentic, personal, uh, meaningful way to use what you know and love about travel to help others. And we saw this rise. We started attracting travel agents, life coaches, retreat leaders, medical experts to our platform to learn how they can incorporate travel with how they help their clients. I can completely see that. And see, that's why I love asking these questions because if I knew the answer, I wouldn't have asked and yeah. I would not have ever thought that. But now yeah. that you explained it, it makes complete sense. I mean, we started Everyday Women in March 2020 mm -hmm. and grew it to a huge company. So there was so much opportunity in such a crazy time. And you're absolutely right. I knew people personally that were let go with in five minutes after working for a company for 40 years and had to figure out what to do. And I'm thankful most of them started their own businesses and are very successful. Mm -hmm. All right. So you've got your idea. You started your company. It started blowing up in a positive way. Now talk to me about a few tips that we can give from your experience to those listening and watching that own other businesses mm -hmm. that how they can take their idea to becoming an industry leader like you obviously have. Yeah. Um, well, one, it's a journey, just like traveling. Uh, business is a journey itself too. Yes. And there's a lot of highs and lows. So did I ever think initially that I would be an industry leader um, and pave this brand new path? No, at the moment I was just doing what I loved. I was figuring out how to start a business yeah. in general and how do I make an impact just doing what I love to help others. Sure. And that grew to me helping even more people, but really doing something that is very different in the industry. So what I would love to tell people is that it's really easy to want to do what others are doing. So people often try to find a proof of concept or that someone else is doing it. So therefore it's a thing. It's, it's possible. Just if you have an idea and you are passionate enough about it and you believe in it enough, go for it. And then it comes with consistency. Again, there's going to be highs and lows. There's going to be times you're, you imposter syndrome kicks in. There's a lot of noise on the internet of what you should and shouldn't be doing and how to do it and not do it. You have to find what works for you. So how do you put up blinders? How do you put up boundaries? How do you cancel any noise that you need to cancel so that you can stay focused so that you can be consistent, especially during those low days, which is where your passion comes in. So I hear two things. People sometimes say um, you should build a business off of your passion, which I agree on. But then there's also people saying, Passion doesn't matter. It's about the grit that you put into it and, you know, the success that it's going to get. So it, it's a twofold, but your passion is going to get you during over that hump on those low days. If you have a clear vision, a long term vision of what you want to accomplish, you that is going to get you through all those small hurdles that you need to get over. So anytime you hear a, a, a bad comment, get a bad review, hear critiques can send you into a mental funk, but knowing what your, your path is, what are you trying to do on a grander scale and a bigger picture? Keep going towards that and everything, all those baby steps in between will just lead you there. If that makes sense. Yeah, it makes complete sense. And I think that one of the most important things that you just said is what I heard. And even though you may have not used the exact words is stop comparing yourself to other people. Mm -hmm. 
stop thinking you should or shouldn't do something because someone is or someone isn't and mm -hmm. stop thinking that you can't do something that maybe somebody else is doing because I always say you make it your own, right? Don't reinvent the wheel, just bling it out and make it your own. Mm -hmm. So I love that you took something that you found passion in, recognized that there was probably, which obviously you were right, a place where you could build a business. Mm -hmm. Then you did the work. You had the tools. And if you don't have the tools, you go find someone that knows how to do it. I love that you did that. So if we went ahead and shared with everybody just a few minutes or just a quick tidbit before we share about yourself and how to get a hold of you and learn more about being part of this, what are the characteristics or loves or passions of somebody that might be interested in being part of this? Being part as a, a as a travel coach, yeah, yeah, travel coach. Yeah, I mean, we're all travelers to some degree. We all have an okay. interest in an, and a love of travel to some degree. Uh, so you'd have to have that internal desire to want to inspire and empower others okay. to have travel experiences that can change them. And oftentimes that starts with ourselves. So I've learned for a lot of my travel coaches, they all have unique stories. So whether it's they started traveling because they lost their husband unexpectedly, unexpectedly and wanted to take a solo trip to just figure out who am I and what do I want in life now? Um, I've had travel coaches who help uh, military veterans use travel as a way to help them cope with, you know, this new life that they have and all of this mental struggles they go through currently. I have travel coaches who help um, single moms travel with their, their kids and know that you can do that. And that travel is a great source of education for your children. So it starts with recognizing what does travel really mean to you? And how has it impacted you in some way? And therefore, who is it that would want something similar or that could align with your story? Mm -hmm. And you can help them have travel experiences that are really going to transform their life. I love that. That's such a beautiful way to put it. So really, it's for anybody. I mean, I have not met one person yet that doesn't like some type of travel, even if it's just a half an hour away. It doesn't matter. So share with everybody how they can learn more about working with you, learn more about being a part of this, where they can find you. Yeah, you can find me, um, the Travel Coach Network, across all of the platforms. Just search the Travel Coach Network. Uh, I myself am Sahara Rose, the Travel Coach, across all the platforms as well, including Instagram, TikTok, Facebook, YouTube, uh, or you can visit us at thetravelcoachnetwork.com. Beautiful. Thank you so much for sharing your journey. It sounds like such a fun one. Really, I love travel. So for me, it just sounds like so much fun. And then you get to do this every day and help others be able to have their own business doing something that they're passionate about as well. So thank you for sharing your expertise with our viewers and our listeners today. Yeah, thank you so much for having me. It was so much fun. It was, it was. Thank you so much, everybody, for listening and watching to another episode of the Successful Women's TV Show. My name is Galit Ventura-Rosen, and I will see you next time. Bye, everybody. Bye.